Hey everyone, welcome back to another single book review video and given the time of year and given that this is the first day of many people's favorite month, I figured I may as well review a group of books that fit right in and uh, they have been reprint for some time now but uh, have been a long time favorite of mine way back when when I was young. These are the Dark Horses Creepy and Eerie Archives. I haven't seen too many reviews of these on YouTube but if you're into nostalgia when magazines were the only way to get illustrated horror stories, you might be interested in picking some of these up. These are the hardcover bound archives of the old creepy and eerie magazines from the mid 60s, 70s, and early 80s. What's great about them is that they are printed in the original magazine format. In fact, I think these are a bit oversized, so they preserve the artwork really well. Now, I don't by any means have all these because the cost would be astronomical, but I skip around and I buy different volumes when I get the chance. Not to mention the weight and the shelf space I need to hold them all. I mean, I like woodworking, but that would be one massive bookshelf build. I remember growing up in southern New Hampshire and going with my dad over to a little strip mall in Derry, New Hampshire. That's New Hampshire, not Derry, Maine. He would go over there and get, you know, 17 cartons of cigarettes, and I would go into the small bookstore that had a ton of magazines in it, and these would be the first things I'd buy. Anyone who doesn't know the history, these magazines were released in the same vein as the old EC comics like John Carpenter and Stephen King used to read. They were similar, and they highlighted some of the great comic artists of the day like Alex Toth, Joe Orlando, and of course the great Frank Frazetta. Creepy was more horror-driven and eerie. The ones I liked the best delved into uh, science fiction. I know many of you out there like graphic novels, and if you like horror at all, I think you might like to give these a try. What's funny is I hear a lot of plot lines from books some of the younger people are reading, and I find that there are several that can be traced or at least inspired by some of the tales in these books. They had some great stories and uh, plenty of monsters and, of course, plenty of suggestive artwork for adolescent boys. When I say adolescent, I mean all men. So if you have any of the room and the upper body development, try one of these out. That's all I have for today, so uh, I'll see you later.